The person, be it gentleman or lady, who has not pleasure in a good novel must be intolerably stupid. There is nothing I would not do for those who are really my friends. I have no notion of loving people by halves. It is not my nature. A lady's imagination is very rapid. It jumps from admiration to love, from love to matrimony in a moment. In vain have I struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. I do not want people to be very agreeable, as it saves me the trouble of liking them a great deal. The more I know of the world, the more I am convinced that I shall never see a man whom I can really love. I require so much. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. I cannot fix on the hour or the spot or the look or the words which laid the foundation. It is too long ago. I was in the middle before I knew that I had begun. I hate to hear you talk about all women as if they were fine ladies instead of rational creatures. None of us want to be in calm waters all our lives. You pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. I have loved none but you. What are men to rocks and mountains? There is a stubbornness about me that never can bear to be frightened at the will of others. My courage always rises at every attempt to intimidate me. I could easily forgive his pride if he had not mortified mine. Ah, there is nothing like staying at home for real comfort. I must learn to be content with being happier than I deserve. If I loved you less, I might be able to talk about it more. The very first moment I beheld him, my heart was irrevocably gone. It isn't what we say or think that defines us, but what we do. Silly things do cease to be silly if they are done by sensible people in an impudent way. Laugh as much as you choose, but you will not laugh me out of my opinion. I have not the pleasure of understanding you. Friendship is certainly the finest balm for the pangs of disappointed love. I may have lost my heart, but not my self-control. To be fond of dancing was a certain step towards falling in love. I am the happiest creature in the world. Perhaps other people have said so before, but not one with such justice. I'm happier even than Jane. She only smiles. I laugh. When I fall in love, it will be forever. For what do we live but to make sport for our neighbors and laugh at them in our turn? Give a girl an education and introduce her properly into the world, and ten to one but she has the means of settling well without further expense to anybody. I always deserve the best treatment because I never put up with any other. You must learn some of my philosophy. Think only of the past, as its remembrance gives you pleasure. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. 
Till this moment, I never knew myself. Life seems but a quick succession of busy nothings. My good opinion once lost is lost forever. He is a gentleman, and I am a gentleman's daughter. So far, we are equal. We all know him to be a proud, unpleasant sort of man, but this would be nothing if you really liked him. If I could but know his heart, everything would become easy. Seldom, very seldom, does complete truth belong to any human disclosure. Seldom can it happen that something is not a little disguised or a little mistaken. A girl likes to be crossed a little in love now and then. It is something to think of. The distance is nothing when one has a motive. I wish, as well as everybody else, to be perfectly happy, but like everybody else, it must be in my own way. Nothing ever fatigues me but doing what I do not like. Know your own happiness. You want nothing but patience or give it a more fascinating name. Call it hope. I declare after all there is no enjoyment like reading. How much sooner one tires of anything than of a book. What strange creatures brothers are. There are people who the more you do for them, the less they will do for themselves. Oh Lizzie, do anything rather than marry without affection. Mary wished to say something very sensible, but knew not how. Nobody can tell what I suffer, but it is always so. Those who do not complain are never pitied. One half of the world cannot understand the pleasures of the other. It is not everyone, said Eleanor who has your passion for dead leaves. You must be the best judge of your own happiness. Without music, life would be a blank to me. She is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me, and I am in no humor at present to give consequence to young ladies who are slighted by other men. She was sensible and clever, but eager in everything. Her sorrows, her joys could have no moderation. It's been many years since I had such an exemplary vegetable. I come here with no expectations, only to profess, now that I am at liberty to do so, that my heart is and always will be yours. Better be without sense than misapply it as you do. All the privilege I claim for my own sex, it is not a very enviable one. You need not covet it, is that of loving longest when existence or when hope is gone. Let us never underestimate the power of a well-written letter. Stupid men are the only ones worth knowing after all. One man's ways may be as good as another's, but we all like our own best. Had I been in love, I could not have been more wretchedly blind, but vanity, not love, has been my folly. A man does not recover from such devotion of the heart to such a woman. He ought not. He does not. 
She hoped to be wise and reasonable in time, but alas, alas, she must confess to herself that she was not wise yet.